hey, Jeff Justice here with Jeff Justice Seminars for Court Reporters. I want to thank you so much for deciding to choose us to get your online CEUs with. We promise not to disappoint you. We provide laugh path content-rich seminars so that you can get your CEUs from the comfort of your own home or office. So basically, you're going to watch the videos as you do, print out the PDFs for the quizzes, answer the questions as you go along, at the end of the whole seminar, so if you're taking a 10-hour seminar after you finish all the sections, email me all of your answers. I will grade them and get you back your letter of completion for your state. And if you're an RPR, the proper forms for NCRA. So get ready to laugh and learn with Jeff Chester Seminars for Court Reporters. Good. Well, good. Well, you talked, uh, Anita talked earlier today about some of the things that uh, stress people out, especially dealing with difficult people. One of the great things is <clears throat> really knowing your personality type and knowing what drives you crazy because of your personality type. And that's sometimes you're, and you're probably going to find out is that uh, you're married to that person. <laughs> because opposites do attract. My wife and I are completely different. You know, thank God, because if she was like me, we'd never get nothing done, and we were both like her, we'd never stop. <laughs> I always tell people if I worked as hard as my wife, I'd be a millionaire. She just never stops. She just go, go. She's like the Energizer uh, bunny on speed. <laughs> just, she's up at 3.30 every morning, 4 o'clock. She's bing, 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 doing all this. I, I come up, it's just like the army, you know, like, we've done more before 9 a.m. than you're doing all day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, uh, so, well, you want to move to finish up a little bit here. Let me just start casting these out here. Did I leave my bag back? By you? Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. So basically, basically, we're going to finish up this part of the program today. And once we're done, then I'll give you your letters, and you are on your way. And for those of you that are RPRs, I will be sending that information into NCRA for you. So you don't have anything to worry about. All you want to make sure of is when you signed in today that your RPR number is there. Doesn't matter about your CSR number. On your letter, if you want, you can write that in there. You don't really require that from me for some reason. But the RPR, definitely. So let's pass these out here. There you go. You pass those down there. You pass those straight back there. Same thing over here, pass them back there. Might need some extras over here, then just pass the rest of them up front. So each one has two sheets to it, a yellow and a white. And for those at home, they'll have that on a sheet that they'll get uh, with the, on the email. So this is a a modified personality test that I had a fellow who's an expert in it do just for me, and it has to do with stress and stressors. So these are the uh, instructions. They're very simple, yet for some reason they tend to confuse people. <laughs> so you see how they go from left to right. So in each one of those boxes, you have to put a number from one to four. You can't use the same number twice. So in every row, you're going to have four, one, two, three, two, one, one, two, one, two, three, three, four, one, three, you know, like that. And the way it works is four is what's most likely, all the way down to one, which is least likely. Now, you might say, well, Jeff, line four, none of those things are me. Well, great. Which one is the farthest away from being you and put that down as one, and which is the closest to being you, even if none of them are you. So mark each one and mark it firm because it's got to go through a uh, carbon in the back. So I'll give you a bit to do that. Take your time. Neatness counts. Anybody need help with those uh, instructions? Did you get one? She made a mistake already. That's okay. How bad is it? You need another one? Is it that bad? Put your drawer a doodle on it. Yeah, so there you go. One, so I started the wrong place. No problem. There is no wrong answers. And that's the great thing about this. 
There are no wrong answers. These, these are just answers for you. Did you do it again? How we see ourselves and how other people see No, it doesn't matter about other people. This is you. And this is, like I say, there's no right or wrong. It's just, you know, I'm most like this and I'm a little less like this and that's really not quite me and that's definitely not me. Or, you know, as close to that as possible. And it's not a speed test, take your time. It's more important that you get the marks in the boxes so that you can read them on the carbon than it is being the fastest one in the place. Those are the only numbers you use, one, two, three, or four, and you can only use each number once in a, uh, a line going across. You need, you need another sheet? Okay, no problem. That's why I brought extras. I know it's late in the afternoon. <laughs> so, so, no, no, no. So, yeah, so each, so each line, so each one of these boxes will have either one, two, three, or four. Same thing with the next line, next line. Okay? Anybody need more time? Raise your hands. Okay, sure, take your time. And usually just right off the bat, what's your first impression? Well, the reason why you don't do this is because, again, other people have other perceptions of you. I remember my wife and I were doing one that our sister gave us, and under, I guess, being daring or something like that, I, I put, like, the lowest number. And she said, you're putting, like, one for, for daring? I said, well, yeah. She goes, that's crazy. You know, you're very daring. I said, no, I'm not. I said, no, daring is people who like that, you know, climb mountains and jump out of airplanes, stuff like that. Because so you speak in front of thousands of people, you know, you stand up in front of audiences, you, you teach, you do all this. I go, well, that's not daring, that's just what I do. So, you know, to me, that's not daring anymore. Just like the guy who jumps out of the airplane, that's fun, daring. No, no, daring's like driving in rush hour traffic, you know? So it's interesting, you know, that's, that's why you don't want to get somebody else involved in this type of test. There are ones that you probably get other people involved but uh, it's always interesting to see what other people's takes are, but just not for this one. Yeah, the problem is some of these, when you put it down, it's like that's not very good for a court reporter. <laughs> Actually, you'd be surprised how court reporters will fall into, I, I can almost tell you what they're going to be. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to look. I'm curious. I got to say, the first time that I did this, I was surprised at the answer for me. And actually there is no answer because you actually are a little of everything. There's nobody that's just one thing. Like, you know, they're a D and that's it. There's nothing else there. Sometimes they have like three above the center line or two above the center line. And because I'll read the descriptions of some of them that are, I feel like are the opposite of me, but then also they'll be like, oh wait, that's me. Like ever read your horoscope? That's me. That's me. Then you read the next month. That's me too. That's me. I'm every month. <laughs> now don't compare answers. <laughs> maybe it should be a three on that. Wait, wait, wait. It should be a two, maybe. All right. So if you're already done, because this is going to take you a little bit of time, turn to the yellow copy. And so you'll notice here. Okay. Okay, so you should be, be able to read them all. Might be a little difficult, because sometimes you get off a little bit. So, this is where people get confused. Uh, you see four different letters there, S, I, B, and C. Okay. So starting with S's, go through and count up all the points that you have for S. So in her first line, she has a four in S. So she put down four. Her next line, her S is a two. So she put a two there, so that'd be six points or whatever. So go through that for all the S's, then go through that for all the I, D's, and C's. How you know you did it correctly is when you add up the total of the four letters, it equals 160. It can't be 159, and it can't be 161. It's got to be 160, okay? So do that part, and then I'll give you the next instructions.
You got that face, it looks like you got 160. Yeah, it is funny. <laughs> Did it knock him out right? Well, I don't know how to hand him all up. Oh, okay. He's a calculator. 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 He's a I'll give you another minute or so. You're talking about the total of all four, right? Well, you, you, you're going to want the total of, of each letter. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm doing each letter. Yeah, so after you do your four columns, just add the sums of those four columns together, and it should right. be equal 160. Okay. Okay. Now if you can just get everybody you know to take this test, so uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to deal with it. Well, what you could do is you could take it uh, home and just read it to them. So, you know, which which four of these are most and least like it, and, and just write down their numbers. Right. So you you would read the white one. Yeah. Well, you don't want them to see the numbers that you put in there, because that would influence them. Still more dessert back there after trying to figure out what to do in between answers. <laughs> and the sick thing is I'm gonna to go to the movies tonight and probably buy candy and so <laughs> all the cookies and cake and stuff today. Just bad. Hmm? What was it that uh Helen General said is uh they had that giant bucket of popcorn at the movie because the only place you could really eat that and keep your self-esteem is in the dark where nobody can see you. <laughs> <laughs> I always love when somebody says something like that and I go, ah, oh, this makes so much sense. Alright, so now we're going to plot your answers. So if you see, up in the top right hand corner, it says score box. So put your score for D, your total points for D, I, S, and C in those four spaces up there. You've already done that. Yes. Right. You already got your thing plotted, don't you? All right, and after you do that, in the bottom box here where it says D, I, S, C, in the bottom right-hand corner, so let's say you have a uh, 55 in D, under D, there is no 55, so you'd put a little dot right above 54. So as close to the numbers that are there as your number falls. And then your next one, you uh, for I, you would plot on that box, on that uh, line, until you have your four numbers on them. Okay, and then draw a line connecting row one to your number in row two, to your number in row three, to your number in row four. Got it? Yeah. Anybody else need a little more time? All right, so this should be interesting, right? How many people here, raise your hand if you're a high D? <laughs> high D, that means, that means D is your highest number. Okay. So what number is your D? So that's below, that's right above the line. So that means if that's your highest number, you rest them are either on the line or below it. I'm sorry, no, my highest number is not D. Okay, so this, the, once again, <laughs> just, this gets confusing. Who, who is a high D, the highest number is D? So you and me, what, what's your D? 49. Okay, good. So, and who's a, who's a, a high I? Okay. Who's a high S? And who's a high C? So you're the. It, it works out just about perfect. <laughs> so let's find out what those things mean, okay? So, and again, 
there's no right or wrong. This is no better or worse. It's just, it's, it's pretty much a, um, a generality of who you are, you know? And so how many people had two or three things close together? Anybody have more than one above the line? Yeah. The center line there? Yeah, so many people. Yeah, look, look around. There's eight, nine people that are above that. So if you look at this here, if you imagine this circle, above the circle are faster, and these are slower people. <laughs> The slower people there, this is where we live. No. <laughs> no, if you think of this, uh, this is your pace. So if you think of a, a, a pace as, if you're a faster pace, drive, like driving a car, you're like pedal to the metal, let's get there. You know, if you're a speaker, you're someone like me that's coming out there, and I'm an engaging people, all right, I'm ready to go. All right, slower, you know, put more on the brake, a little steadier, right, maybe a little milder when you speak, and, you know, not as that forceful, okay? Does that make sense? That's what the faster, slower represents. So if you think about this part, now we're going to divide it into task and people. This is your priorities. So are you, uh, if, if you imagine this is the steering wheel like this, are you more towards task oriented? What would a task be for you, you all? Hey, get, get that out, got to get it out before midnight tonight, get, get, come on, got to get three jobs this week, got to get the past done, and or people. But what about my family? What about the people in my life? So are you more people-oriented or more task-oriented? Again, nothing wrong with either one. Okay? We need both. And, and my, is, even though I'm a high D, I'm much more people-oriented, my wife's much more task-oriented. She does gift baskets, and her thing is, boy, I knocked out 50 gift, gift baskets today. Why? <laughs> yes? How does that correlate with this just? Okay, we're we'll getting get to it. Oh, okay. I just want to do it one step at a time. <laughs> so uh, you'll see when we get to the next chart, so expertly drawn. <laughs> okay. And this you should have in your hand ups to some extent. So, D-I-S-C. I'm going to tell you what they mean. I know you're shaking your head. But yeah, there's round and small. Yeah, right. <laughs> and also, your handout has two faster people. I know, I know. <laughs> both Carrie and I both have a mistake in our handouts. We're going, this is great. We're going to court reporters. And what do I have? Do I want to have uh, faster people down here and faster people up here? So it's slower people on the bottom right. Okay. You at home, you didn't see that. Your handouts will be right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is what the letters stand for. Dominance is D. I is influence. And I'm going to explain those more in a little bit. So D is dominance. I is influence. S is steadiness. Steadiness. You're a steady person. I can depend on you. You're going to have that transcript done when you said you're going to do it. And compliance. Is for the C. So dominance, you could say, is how you respond to problems and challenges. And remember, this is just your area. Because remember, you've got points in every one of these letters. Right? So they all say something. Excuse me? So dominance is how you respond to problems and challenges. Okay? Influence is how you influence others to your point of view. Oh, that's right. Disagree. <laughs> it's part of it. I'm sorry, did you say that it influenced what? Others okay. to your point of view. Oh, now, my wife would, would say that she's not much of an influencer. <laughs> or yet, whenever she wants me to do something, she always finds a benefit for me in doing it. So, would you go and drop this off at my customer you know, up north of Atlanta, and you know, while you're up there, that's, there's, you know, that's right near that pizza place that you love. <laughs> pizza? Okay, I'll drive up there. 
but she will always do that. And it's actually gotten to a joke with us. I go, okay, let me hear the benefit. And, <laughs> and she does it naturally. So she's influenced, influencing me to do the task that she wants me to do. Right? Any questions on that? All right, so the next one is steadiness, and that's how you proceed within the pace of your environment. How much? How you proceed within the pace of your environment. And the last one is compliance. How you abide by the rules and procedures established by others. Now, I'm in some ways very much a rule follower and in some ways very much not. You know, I can't see, nobody's 100% anything. If you were, you'd be impossible to live with. You know, if you were just like strictly dominant, <laughs> and if you, you know, strictly compliant, you'd just be, all right, whatever, whatever you'd like to do. Wait, that is me. Isn't that all men? When wives ask you, what movie you want to go see? I don't know, what do you want to go see? I don't think I've ever gone with my wife to a movie that I suggested. You know where I'm going tonight? Spider-Man! <laughs> I go to see Spider-Man. I've been Marvel Comics as a kid. I want to go see Spider-Man. Does she want to go see it? Not on your life. <laughs> but with her, we'll go see, you know... Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla, if they were staying at a nice hotel in like Bermuda or something, you know, for the weekend and discovered, and, and Godzilla discovered himself there through yoga and meditation. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't want to be sexist, but there is such a thing as chick flicks and guy flicks between my wife and I. And I know there's plenty of women that would love to go see Spider-Man. My, my youngest daughter would love to go see him. And uh, I'm sure there's a guy somewhere who wants to see, see the other ones. <laughs> but since, uh, so there's a, a lot of different tests. There's, uh, you know, Myers-Briggs, things like that. This is just one of many of them, right? I don't, I don't quite follow the faster test, faster people. Like, how do you interpret that? So you'd like me to interpret that? That's what the next oh, part we're going to do right now. Okay, sorry. So what we're talking about, you know, faster, pedal to the metal, slower, foot on the brake, task-oriented over here, and what oriented here? People-oriented over here, okay? So you notice that if you're, um, if you charted where you were, so like, so like let's say, um, all right, so let's say you were mostly D, and so you'd be up here a lot, and you were just a little, little bit I here, and a little bit C, but very high C, so um, you would fall in this area over here, which would be kind of crazy. But it seems like your dominance would be up in D, so your dominance would be you're a faster task-oriented person, All right? Or you're a faster people person, and you can be a faster people person, can't you? Hey, come on, what do you want to do? Hi, you ready? What do you say? We have a party tonight. Hey, that'd be great. All right, let's go. No? And then I'm going to explain each one of them to you. So they, they found that most people uh, in the world fall into one of four categories. Predominantly fast-paced, task-oriented, fast-paced, people-oriented, so slower-paced, people-oriented, or slower-paced test-oriented. Again, as a generalization, you fall into one of those four, right? There's nobody that's not any, any of those. So this is where it gets interesting. So the D, where are my high Ds? Just you and me, huh? Do you feel that's correct? Yeah. Yeah. It should be, yes, they do. <laughs> All right, so. There are both areas of strength and struggle associated with any of the four basic types. So there's good and bad for everything. So D's can be, and if you all like, what I, I would do too, I have everybody's email here, is when I get uh, home tomorrow, I'll send you an email with this attachment so you don't go crazy trying to write everything down. You can just sit there and, and, and enjoy it. And if there's something you want to take notes about, you can. So a D. They are responsible, inquiry, adventurous, decisive. How am I doing so far? She can't decide. 
You're not all, you're not all of it. You're some of it, right? Competing, assertive, intent, insistent, headstrong, is she? Yes. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not at all. That's her. Trailblazing, enterprising, bold, daring, striving, mobilizing, individualistic, self-centered, <laughs> egocentric, <laughs> challenging, <Yeah>. and oppressive. <laughs> I think the only one that doesn't fall in is the indecisive, the decisiveness. I'm indecisive, but everything else. But see, the, the, it, again, it's it's parts of everything. So, the more dominant the D tendencies in one's temperament, the more these traits will be observed. Now, obviously, the less, the less. In every personality style, the difference between strength and struggle is degrees. In other words, a balanced, appropriate response is the key. So, a mental image of somebody who has a high D personality, I imagine an oven mitt, because with them, things really heat up. And if you're not careful, you can get burnt. All right? So... You know, they love to turn up the heat. Sometimes things, they get too hot to handle. Uh, most times you will find them comfortable to deal with, but sometimes you will need protection. <laughs> does it really say that? It does. Like a cross or a garlic or something. <laughs> now, a caution for D-types, this is your lesson to be learned, is that when you turn up the heat on a project, things get cooking, but when you turn the heat up on people, they can get burnt. So it's great for, boom, getting that project out, but people are people, too. So understand that D-types live in this heat and do not understand the difficulty this can create for other people, as you will find all of us on ours. Now, what drives you crazy? The kind of people that cause you stress are people that are irresponsible, undecisive, submissive, passive, introverts, and apathetic. Yeah. These two fall in the night. <laughs> Is that what you said? That's your husband. That's what I'm saying. It's, it, it's opposites. I mean, it's a reason why they say opposites attract. I mean, they really do. I mean, again, two people just like each other, that's just too much. All right, so where are my eyes? Raise your hands. Just one eye, too. Okay. Now, now, what does the I stand for? Influence. Influence, that's right. And the same stuff I said about the D, uh, both you know, strength and, uh, and struggles and for that. You are sociable, trusting, cheerful, smooth, spontaneous, inducing, warm-hearted, convincing. Outspoken, animated, spirited, eager, partisan, political, engaging, attracting, influencing, exciting, effusive, and manipulative. <laughs> Got you going great right to the end there, weren't you? <laughs> so again, do you see yourself not at all? Not manipulative. It's not anything. You can't just pick one thing, no, it's all wrong, because I'm not oh, that. No, no, no. I think it's little degrees of it, you may have some of it. Because see, there's four other, three other letters that are influencing you, that you know, move things out of the way and compensate for them. So the people that drive you crazy are court reporters. No. <laughs> <laughs> people that are precise, methodical, orderly, or evasive, fussy, and fretful. Mind you of anybody? Okay. What? But see, you got to understand too, when people are being like that, it's driving you crazy because of your personality type. You know, if somebody is just, you know, so precise and, you know, like with me, I'd be there going, you know, they lighten up, you know, come on, it's close, close enough, all right, man, you're going to drive yourself crazy doing it. It's like Carrie called me up and she was just, appalled that she made one mistake on her handouts. And I'm going, I'm sorry, they're already at the printers. Think of something funny to say. <laughs> like I'm going to do, because I've got a mistake on mine too. But, uh, and, but it, just, it just drove her crazy. She felt horrible about it. She goes, and you know, you're doing a, a program for court reporters, you want it to be right. I mean, you, if you're doing this program for anybody else, they wouldn't even notice it. 
But I mean, I'll send out something to court reporters. I get five emails going, there's a mistake. Right there. <laughs> you call yourself a court reporter? No, I call myself the comedian. Right? I'm the one that did this. I probably should have sent it to the court reporter first. So, uh, a mental image that may help you to remember your uh, characteristics of the I personality, a firecracker. Big old firecracker. And that reminds us that they are almost always ready for a good time, so it may be harder for them to concentrate on the task at hand. That is so true. <laughs> oh, now we nailed it, didn't we? Okay, yes. Most times you will find them fun to deal with, but sometimes it can get out of hand. Oh no, there's our eye again. All right, now the caution for eye types, as the star of the show, you can be very entertaining, but you can also be loud and disruptive. Don't explode at the wrong time. And understand that eye types live from emotional peak to emotional peak, and do not spend much time in the valleys. They do not understand the difficulty that this can create for others. I just want to go. Party, what do you want to work with? Go. Now, now your head's bobbing yes, like, oh, I see. <laughs> Suddenly, uh, you are wise. Oh, <laughs> oh Swami. Okay. Where's my essence? We had a lot of essence, right? That's probably most of the room. And that is what most court reporters are. The S. And what does it stand for? Steadiness. steadiness. That's what we need. Because if you have steadiness, you are calm, dependable, constant, deliberate as you are adding up your rows the other way just to make sure it all worked out, right? Invariable, established, predictable, routine, possessive, territorial. My machine. What are you looking at my machine for? Not your machine. Composed, all right, supportive, submissive, yielding, introverted. That's you. <laughs> that most court reporters. <laughs> Uh, indifferent, withdrawn, resistant to change, passive, apathetic. Wow. You do not want to hang out with these. But you might want to find a new friend, okay? Because <laughs> they don't like you. You apathetic people drive them crazy. Okay. That's why she's on the other side of the office. <laughs> there you go. This the first time I've seen in years. <laughs> so see, it actually worked out. Put her desk on the other side of the office. And the people that drive you crazy are assertive, insistent, Headstrong, competitive, self-centered, and oppressive. Anybody we know? <laughs> All right, so for your symbol to remind, uh, remind yourself who you are, is you just imagine a big safety pin. All right? So that tip reminds us that they can be counted on to help. You want something down, done, you call that S, because you will be there to help. You're the ones that work in your home office and your relatives come by and go, oh, would you mind taking care of the kids today? Um, oh, okay, I was working on this transcript. I think, you know, oh, could you get the dry cleaning for me and pick that up? Could you help out here? We used to do a whole thing about the home office. We've done programs on that before. I don't know if any of you have been to it in the past, but we're talking about just hiding your car in your garage, leaving the lights <laughs> off. Because we work at home too, my wife and I, and I remember one time our neighbors came over and said, would you mind watching Andy? And like we're going, oh, okay, they must have some big business thing. They're making us stop our business for the day. We want to go for a run. A what? A run, yeah. They're going for like an hour and a half run. I think there was some lame there, too. I don't think it was quite a run. But Andy is like, he's not one of those kids who just go, okay, go watch TV. I mean, he's one of these kids, I'll walk in a room, and he's climbing the frame of the door with his hands and feet up to the top, hanging upside down off the back. Anything that had anything you could grab on, that's what he does. But because we're home, people see that as, hey, you're not, not doing anything. You just at home today and take care of them. Okay, thank you. Okay, they find it hard to confront a problem or to speak their true opinions. Um, I like a bath bathroom break, but I don't really need one if nobody else. <laughs> go home? No, no, I don't have to go home. The kids, they're, they're, they're feed themselves. <laughs> okay, most times you will find them reliable to deal with, but they may not discuss their hurt feelings. Right? You're not going to tell a lawyer how you feel about that, right? 
Uh, as a caution for S-types, in your eagerness to help others learn to ask, what part of no do you not understand? Like, did you find it hard to say no? <coughs> and then ask yourself, what part of now don't I understand? <laughs> so it's a no for them, it's a now for you. So S-types do not understand the difficulty. Their indecision can create for others. Okay, and compliance. Where's my C's? Two, three C's, four C's, four C's, okay. It's about right for a group this size. So C's, would you say you're spontaneous or balanced? How many would say balanced? Raise your hand out of the C's. You're right, okay, so you do know yourselves. Spontaneous drives you crazy. Yeah. Impartial, candid, tactful, precise, correct, perceptive, methodical, orderly, fastidious, exacting, traditional. You'd say those are all good traits for a court reporter? Yeah. Orthodox, cautious, conscientious, calculated. Fretful, fussy, evasive, and shrewd. Shrewd. Fucking shrewd here. And the people that drive you crazy are spontaneous, outspoken, effusive, and manipulative. You're pointing at her? <laughs> there you go, that's her. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> when it just changed chairs. <laughs> All right, so uh, so the mental image of C uh, would be maybe a magnifying glass. Just imagine one of those big old Sherlock Holmes magnifying glasses, and it reminds us that the attention they give to detail and accuracy, to the attention that they give to detail and accuracy, they tend to be perfectionists. They value long-term opportunity over short-term gain. They tend to hold themselves and you to very high standards. Hey, if I'm doing it, everybody's doing it. <laughs> if I can do it that well, and you know, there's a little bit of me there too. The girls at home hate it when I like load the dishwasher or if I clean the kitchen. Because now once I've cleaned the kitchen, it's like, why can't we keep it clean? <laughs> I clean the whole kitchen. Why are you just leaving it? Why don't you just put that in the dishwasher? Where if somebody else cleans it, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Made it to the yeah. So again, like I say, there's a little bit of each one of them in, in all of us. So a caution for C-types, not everything in life can be calculated logically. As Pascal noted, Pascal noted, the heart has its reasons which reason cannot understand. Is that true? Yeah. So how many people really felt that, you know, hey, that was pretty close to me? Isn't it amazing? So now, it, you know a little bit about yourself, and you know what kind of drives you crazy. Too, you probably already knew that, but now, now you have evidence, right? <laughs> So I'm going to send you these copies too, which I've marked on. So I'll rescan these so you'll be able to, to see them all. But I just think I think it's fascinating if you understand somebody's personality type. Uh, like I know I can't press my wife to make a decision; it would just drive her crazy. How many people here are great at planning vacations? Like you've already got your summer vacation plan; you know where you're going. In this economy, how many people are taking <laughs> summer vacation? What's a summer vacation? Yeah. I could be working. Right. Uh, do you plan things in advance? Sorry, what? Yeah. Plan things in advance? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Cool. We'll ask me. See, my wife can't do that. You know, we're, we're, we're thinking about what to do in June. She goes, it's me. <laughs> how can I plan that now? Oh and really, it just drives her crazy when she has to sit there and say, okay, June such and such, I'm going to be taking off because her business is dependent on the phone ring. She does gift baskets and she does gourmet snack cookies, which are just delicious, called Grits Bits. And 
at any time. A bride could call up and say, I've got a wedding coming in, I want to get 100 boxes, or I want to get uh, 50 gift bags, or I want to get that, and I'm just going, at some time, you got to let go and just say, you know what, I'm going to let our oldest daughter Jenica do it, and she may not do it as well as you do, but she will do the best that she can, and we can correct any mistakes when she gets back, but she always thinks she's going to miss something. It's like one time we went up in New York City, she had a book called uh, For Popcorn Lovers Only, and she's going to be on Regis and Kathy Lake. And we get up there on Friday, and she's just so excited about it. And as it, she was also an actress back then, uh, so she used to always check her phone. You know, you never know when you're going to get an audition because I am just relaxing for the weekend. I don't care about messages or anything. My family was up there. We'll go spend time with your family. We'll do New York. I'll do the TV show. It'll be great. Sunday, she checks her messages. David Letterman show called on Friday when heard that she was going to be up there. Wanted her on the show. Mm. Like, oh. Man, I could have put that on my resume. <laughs> His wife was on the David Letterman show. <laughs> so ever since then, it's like, I'm going to miss something. So she's always checking those things. And of course, she was right, yes? Do they get paid for that? It depends. If you are what's called a SAG after a um, Screen Actors Guild, oh, okay. uh, you get uh, the day rate, which is $700. But most people coming on there promoting their movies. But even, you know, if, if who's George Clooney, if he goes on it, they have to pay him $700 because he's a member of Screen Actors Girl. Even that's probably what he tips during the day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of fun. But boy, can you imagine doing that, missing that? It's like, oh, oh did I miss that? So now she's the Queen of Grits. And <laughs> so she's been on a bunch of shows for that. But, uh, so are there any questions about the personality type? Yes? Is there one of these that is better for court court? I mean, I, because each one has some characteristics that are good, but... I would say for court, repo court reporter, uh, it seems to me like I and S are the two main ones. Then it seems like that. Oh, no, no, not influencer, I'm sorry. Uh, S and C. Yeah. Because those are people are methodical, exact, they want to get it right, they're dependable, they're going to be there for you, they're going to get it done, they're not going to do anything else. I would, you know, it's not that it, it's better. Let me change that. That is who the profession attracts more. Oh, okay. Because, okay? you know, you might, you might go, go to a football team, and you can imagine how aggressive football players are, and give them this, and there's going to be some people that are C's, and some people that are S's, and not, not all going to be D's and I's, right? So, as it, in a generality, it attracts more of a steady, uh, the C's and, the, and that as opposed to the D's. You can see there's only one D in the whole room. And I would say that uh, Anita Paul's probably not a, a D either. But yet Patty Wood and I, how many people have seen Patty Wood at our program? She's definitely a D. I mean, she's just high end, just go, 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 go. And uh, I think I'm actually an influence. My high is actually I than D. Kind of strange, but I, I would have thought I would have been a high D. But no, apparently not. Okay. Any other questions about it? All right, so I will email you tomorrow a, uh, a copy of my final notes, and, and that way you can have it. And again, if you want to do it for family, I wish I had enough of these to give out to people, but I, I've still got three more seminars to do <laughs> this year, and I've only got a, 300 of them left at home, so got to hold on to those. Um, you know what maybe I'll do? Maybe I'll scan a blank one and just send it to you. And then you have your yellow sheet so you can see what order they are in. Now, I don't want you, I don't want you putting spouses and, and children through this and going, I'm sorry, we are not compatible, I'm out of here. No, I went to a seminar. We should not be together. We are too much older. You know? I'd like to have somebody else do this and fill it out what they perceive. What that? That's an option, too. Have somebody else fill it out, see? Now, what I've done in the past, too, is when I've done marketing things, I've uh, had the person that was helping me with my branding send an email out to people that I've worked for, and they've said, would you describe Jeff? What did he do for you? What's your relationship? What's, what's one quick sentence that describes how you feel about him? And that was really interesting, because I read that, and people were saying things about me that I don't know whether they were just making them up or not, but I'd, I'd never thought about that myself, and I said, wow, people really think that of me? Wow, I'm a lot nicer guy than I thought. <laughs> Should hang around with me more. <laughs> <laughs>
So, um, so great. So, so put that away, and we'll. You know, so let's just end that part of the program, okay? Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> So, I love my program here is about dealing with stress, and I know Anita touched on some of it earlier today, but the type of things, so now we know the kind, kind of people that cause us stress, the type of things that cause us stress. Uh, here's, a, here's a great thing that I just read today. Matter of fact, I've, I've been talking about this for years, about how bad anger and getting mad are for you. And you know, I had a, a buddy of mine, I, I don't know if you've heard the story before, but I had a buddy of mine, Bill, who's he's about my height, ex-Marine, buzz haircut, about 290, and he's like, Jeff, sometimes you just gotta yell. You just gotta get mad, get it out there. You know, get out your frustrations. And I tell him, Bill, you know, the medical evidence proves otherwise. Matter of fact, I, I, that time I'd read an article in the USA Today, so you know, you know it's true. And it had talked about how uh, they'd done autopsies on men in their late 50s, early 60s, and they found their hearts were covered by lesions, scarring, which is what happens when we get angry. Body pumps out adrenaline, causes little lesions in your heart, and they wind up scarring over, making your heart less elastic and more prone to heart disease. And Bill would be like, yeah, hey, whatever. So then he calls me back the next week and says, boy, you're gonna love this one. Because I'm driving downtown Atlanta, and I've got a client in the car with me, a woman I've never met before. As I'm driving downtown, this jerk cuts me off. Because I almost go off the road. I finally get control of the car. I look up and here's this moron giving me the, shall we say, high sign. He said, you know, usually somebody doing that to me, I have a whole litany of things to yell out. But I couldn't because this woman was in the car with me. Right, so it turned out that Bill's favorite program when he was a kid was Gumby. Remember, remember that? He says, I don't know where it came from, but I found myself going, well, he didn't seem very friendly, did he, Pokey? <laughs> They both started to laugh, and they laughed all the way downtown, doing Gumby and pokey, uh, and pokey jokes. And he said, Jeff, you know, normally something like that hap happened, I would remember it four or five times during the day. And each time I remembered it, I'd get madder. You ever things like that? Yeah. Yeah. What do we say, it gets under your skin, gets in your craw. You know people that like to hang on to anger? You ever meet people like that? Probably have them in your family somewhere. Oh, well, that's Sally. She's so, oh, there's always something wrong with her. She's, and their life is around drama. And, you know, and this. I've known people like that. They, 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 they cause drama because that's what they love. Or like a buddy of mine, Robert. And this guy's actually like the nicest guy you ever want to meet until you put him behind the wheel of a car. Right? And you talk about possessive. I mean, that's his lane. You know, not coming in his lane. You're not cutting off anything. Well, he got a ticket in Atlanta about 10 years ago that he felt he didn't deserve. And I'm telling you, to this day, we'll be driving by that spot, and he's like, that's it. That's where it happened. You know, and he's like, hey, Robert, you know, let it go. <laughs> but every time he does that, it causes more harm to him. All right, so here I am. I'm getting a USA Today yesterday. What does that say right there? Argue often, you could die young. Argue often, you could die young. Argue often, you could die young. Denmark, they did a study, and they did it 11 years ago, 10,000 men, men and women, and they you know, did questionnaires with them, but they wanted to find out which ones of them argued a lot, whether it was with family, neighbors, friends, or whatever, and which ones didn't. 11 years later, they came back, and the people that used to argue a lot had a two to three times of a chance of dying in that 11-year period. It's pretty wild, isn't it? Two to three times chance of dying as the people that didn't argue and were, you know, much more relaxed about things. And have you ever seen that with people you know? There were always 10 stories, you know, like that, you know, they, they just... Like, I've got a buddy of mine, Robert, I'm, I'm really, I mean, I don't want to jinx anything, but I'm really surprised he's still alive. You know, he's, he's the kind of guy who, you know, no noise, 
And he lives in a suburban neighborhood surrounded by people and dogs and everything. And he'd just be, he'd yell at people. He'd leave notes on the door about their dog. Can you shut that thing up? What's wrong with your people? You know, it's a dog, okay? <laughs> he'd, he'd go knock on their door at one o'clock in the morning and stuff. And I mean, he would just, it would drive him crazy. You'd just see veins coming out of his head. I'm going, how have you not had a heart attack yet? But I mean, he's like the poster child for that. Right? But think about that. I, that's why you see monks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that funny? You ever see them? No wrinkles on their forehead, nice and calm. These guys lead, live to their 80s and 90s. You know, I'm always trying to think of things that help people live longer. I hate to tell you, vegetarian lifestyle. They studied Seventh Day Adventists who were vegetarians, and they found that they live about seven years longer than we do. That's right down the line, and. Uh, Actually, exercise as we get older. What do you think the be best exercise you could do is? Walking. Walking. Pretty good. Swimming. Swimming. Really good. Yoga. Very good. Yoga. Weightlifting. Pilates. What did you say? Weightlifting. Well, weightlifting, especially if you're a candidate for osteoporosis, you want to do weight weight resistance training, which I've tried to get my wife to do for ten years, and she's the poster child for it. White. Blue eyes, blonde hair, small frame. I mean, it's just like her picture is in the medical journal. You know, when they say, you could get osteoporosis. But she lifts a hot, lot of heavy boxes in her work, so, right. you know, which is why I don't help her unload the car. And I'm doing this for you, honey. <laughs> Trying to help, okay? But somebody said Tai Chi. Who said that? Bingo. That's supposed to be seven years longer, too. Number one thing. And because what happens with Tai Chi is when you move, you're moving very slowly and you're putting all your weight on your legs and you're, you're improving your balance. They found that with Tai Chi, uh, they started doing it with seniors, 48% less falls. Wow. It's amazing, isn't it? And that's why I started taking it. I mean, when I was about 49, 50, I took about three or four bad falls where I tripped on stuff. I mean, where I never should have. And I mean, you know, really bang myself up. And I started going, well, you know, I'm just getting old, that's it. And I'm going, wait a second, I'm like 49 years old. I'm saying I'm getting old now, what am I going to be like when I'm 60? And I started uh, doing Tai Chi, and it just, I don't think I've had a bad fall since there. I've had one that was just unavoidable. I did, I did one last week. <laughs> Came down my driveway, it had been raining, and we have planters in the center of the driveway, because it's like the stupidest thing we could think of doing. <laughs> And I had completely flat shoes on, and I had both garbage cans behind me. And I'm coming down like I've done every single day, I mean, every single year, a week for 26 years. And I hit that after the rain, and both my feet just went straight up in the air. I came down on my rear, and both my hands bent back like that. And I'm sitting there going, I think I broke something. I mean, I, I, I'm just like slowly starting to move, and I'm going, okay, it hurts, but I, I'm, I'm able to move it. And I was really lucky. I'm not landed right on my rear and the hands, all three of them at the same time. I think if I just landed on any one of the three, I would have been in trouble. But Tai Chi, really, it's, it's amazing. Because like I say, you know, you're, you're building up the strength like that. You're, you're, you're getting your balance up. And, you know, of course, you know, it's great for stress management. It takes a while to learn how to do it. It takes about a year to learn the whole form. And if you do it, you want to do Yang style, not Chen style, as you get older. Because Chen style is much more... Forceful, yes. Do you have to have a lot of flexibility when you do Tai Chi? No, it's just like but yoga. Like the yoga and stuff, they're putting their legs around their neck. Yeah, but, but see, what you're saying, you, see, you do it to the level that you can do it. Okay. You no, know, <coughs> like there is one, um, there's one thing in Tai Chi called the snake, where at the end of the routine, after your body's been through this whole flexible thing, at the end, you're like this, you come around, and these guys in my class, these young guys, they come around like this and they go forward and their butt skims across the floor and then they come up and do this. Well, you know, I'm there like this going, <laughs> you know, that's as far as I can get down for it <coughs> unless I really stretch. Same thing with yoga. Now you do yoga, you don't try to put your hand, legs behind your legs the first six months or year. You know, maybe three or four years down the road. My, my youngest daughter's been doing yoga. And she started from not being able to do any of it to a year later, she's doing these headstands, she's doing all these wild things. I'm going, that is just so cool. But you build it up. 
You know, nobody can do it right off the bat. But just a little bit of time, you find a good teacher and, and do it at your pace. And this was interesting with the Academy Awards. They found out that the person that wins the Academy Award usually lives about seven years longer than everybody else. It doesn't matter how many times you've been up for it. If you don't win it, you don't get that bonus. Well, what do you think that is? What do you think they live longer? Happy. Happy? Okay. Less pressure on the job. Less <laughs> pressure? They probably make more after they win an award, so they're... You're saying they make more and they not afford better doctors? <laughs> <laughs> what was it that Sally Field said when she won? You like me. You really like yeah. me. You like me. You really like me. Because I tell you, you talk about people that are insecure actors. <laughs> draw a big box around them. Never think that they're good enough. Never think they're, that they're the tops. But the Academy Award is all of your peers saying you're the best. Right. It's just like if we decide in this room today, you are the best poker reporter we've ever seen. Thank you. Well, yes, you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Thank you. I'll start sign autographs in the back and hey, take some dessert with you too. What the heck? It's on me. But that's just it. it it's self-esteem. So if you understand what I'm saying here, if you start eating vegetarian, practice Tai Chi, and win the Academy Award, <laughs> you may never die. <laughs> just keep going on. But I just love seeing this article uh, today. And it, it was so, I never get the newspaper, but I was doing a show in Atlanta yesterday morning before I came here, and they had free papers at the front desk, and I said, well, I'll just have something to read on the airplane. And I looked right on the front page, there's that article. If you argue a lot, you could die younger. So, you know, think about that, If uh, and again, you might, be married to somebody that's very high strung and they're not going to believe it. Get the article and show. It's tough to do. So, you know, things like meditation th and, and thinking before. Matter of fact, Anita and I were having a big conversation about this at dinner last night about uh, people get, getting you angry. And I'm sure she talked to you about it today, right? About letting people get you mad, letting people be in charge, George of it. And I've always, my wife and I have always both said that to our kids. You know, they'd come home and go, oh, you know, Mary made me so mad today. And my wife would go, no, she didn't make you mad. She did too. You don't know what she did. And my wife would go, no, Mary did what she always does. You decided to get mad. Are you telling me I decided to get mad? Yes, because you had a choice. You could not get mad or you could get mad. And you chose to get mad. Oh, I'm not mad. <laughs> now you're choosing to get mad at us, honey. <laughs> Slam the door. But now that they're older, they start to realize it. And now, and my wife always has this expression. She says, "Don't buy into it." Yeah. yeah somebody's pulling some stuff. Just don't buy into it. Now you can buy into it and be writing in there with all them, their turmoil and stuff, or you can decide not to. Do you all remember that story I used to talk about, we'll see? I'll tell it real quick again, it's about a farmer who has a donkey, does all the work on his farm. One day a big storm comes up, donkey gets hit by a lightning bolt and dies. The neighbor comes over and says, that's got to be the worst thing that's ever happened to you. The farmer says, we'll see. Well, it turned out it wasn't that bad of a thing because all the neighbors felt so sorry for him, they chipped in and brought him a younger, stronger donkey. Neighbor comes back and says, aha, that's going to be the best thing that's ever happened to you. He says, well, we'll see. About a week later, his only son is working with a donkey. Donkey kicks him, breaks his leg. Now the farmer's got all this work he's got to do himself. No help. Neighbor comes back and says, that has got to be the worst thing that's ever happened to you. We'll see. Two weeks later, the army comes to his village, taking all the healthy young men off the war. They can't take his son because he's got a broken leg. You never know, do you? Yeah. Right? How many times you had something that you thought was the worst possible thing and it turned out to be the best possible thing? Right? Or you, you had something that was going to be the best thing ever. And it's just like a vacation and turned into vacation from hell. It's like, this is going to be the best vacation ever, man. I can't wait to get on that carnival cruise line. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to say anything before, right? <laughs> Imagine every one of those people was thinking, this is going to be awesome. But he knows about the pool. <laughs> Heaving by the pool. <laughs> you just never know. So next time something looks like it's going to be bad, what are you going to say? 
That's what I wanted eight of you to say. Now, what are you going to say? We'll see. What if it looks like it's going to be great? We'll see. Great. Will you use it? We'll <laughs> <laughs> Should have known better. <laughs> but if you think about that, I remember somebody telling me a story at one of the seminars that I did, and she said, I was supposed to, when I was about 21 years old, I was supposed to go to Paris for the week, and it was my dream vacation. This is just going to be amazing. I got the flu. I couldn't go. And I was so upset. My mother said, why don't you go see your cousin, whoever it was? And I think it was Chicago. Oh, I don't want to do that. Well, your dad and I, we already made plans to do something. We don't want you staying here alone. Okay. So he gets on a plane, goes to see your cousin. They're all going to go out to dinner that night. He says, I just feel lousy. I'm just going to stay here. You go to, out to dinner, uh, and, I'll, and I'll see you all later. So they leave. And about a half hour later, she hears a knock on the door. Here's a guy that was supposed to meet him to join him to go out to dinner. Missed him. They started talking. She said, two months later, we were married. Wow. It was like my soulmate came and knocked on the door. Wow. Had she gone to Paris? Never would have met him. Yeah. And they've been married for 30 years. So you just never know, do you? Right. It is unbelievable. All right, so we all have things that, that cause us stress. In the book there, if you look near the back there, there's a place for you to put down, what is, a matter of fact, before you even do that, just turn and talk to your neighbor and discuss the type of things that cause you stress. Now, you already uh, discussed things that, that cause you problems as court reporters, but this is just in your life, and it could be court reporting, it could be home, or whatever. Just discuss with somebody real quick type, types of things that uh, cause you stress, and then write down the three biggest ones for you. They don't have to be in order right now. You can change order later on, okay? So take a, a little bit and do that, and I'll be right back. All right, so go ahead and write your three down. Just getting to the point you just chatted now, so. Write down what you th think are your three top stressors. Right, everybody have their three down? Well, just take a one there. I mean, if you, have to, if you have to really think and think of what causes you stress and you can't think of anything, maybe you don't get stressed out much. I mean, that's a good thing. Maybe even keeping that Valium prescription pill. <laughs> Let me have some more of that Prozac pie. That can't be good for you. <laughs> and writing, that's one of the best things to do with writing, is just start writing. I teach a stand-up comedy class in Atlanta, and everybody gets writer's block. They go, what should I do? Go write something down. What should I write? Write down, I have writer's block. I can't think of anything to, to write about. I can't think of anything funny. Nothing funny to me. You just keep writing and then all of a sudden I think of something and it's like, oh, wait a second. It starts to make sense. So did you ever do improv? Yeah, well, yeah I love improv. It just didn't pay anything. What about, is that stressful to do improv? Is it what? Stressful. Is it stressful to do improv? Because you have to like, they only give you like, I think it's more, to, like, make a whole it's more stressful to do stand-up comedy. Right. Uh, basically, uh, like Jay Leno said one time, <coughs> if you write 10 jokes, you'll be lucky if two of them get laughs the first time you do them. Right. But if in improv, you can make up 10 things on stage, eight out of 10 of them will get laughs. Oh, really? I actually did an improv session with a lot of people last year. I think here, we did one. And it was great. We had. And you know, if you have people that are introverts and stuff, they don't really like to get up there and do it improv. So, but we had a couple of uh, D's and I's in, in the audience that came up and did it, and it was great. Just real fun stuff, and improv helps you think on your feet. I do improv uh, programs for sales teams, people like that, where they have to go and sell, and they're constantly being given stuff and got to come up with things. But if you really think about it, this conversation that you and I are having right now is improv. Right. Because I don't know what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. You don't know what I'm going to say. We're just responding. So in improv, you just listen to the person, and then usually you respond with yes and. Right. In that form. You don't have to say those words, but you just don't never say no. The guy says, uh, hey, look, it's my friend, the bus driver. No, I'm not a bus driver. I'm a surgeon. And that kind of stops everything. Yeah. As opposed to saying, Yes, and I've got my magic bus right over here. Where do you want to fly off to? Well, I was thinking of going to, you know. So you always agree with the person and then move it on. All right, so what are some of the things uh, 
that cause you stress? What is it? The future. What is it about the future that causes you stress? Everything. <laughs> How do you know there's going to be a future? No, well, you just don't know. There's nothing you can do. You know, death only affects the people it leaves behind. Right? Because you're dead. There's a famous story about Rama. It was a king in India. And it's towards the end of the evening, and his brother says to him, Good night, brother. I'll see you in the morning. And Rama stops everything. Call wakes up the whole kingdom. They have this giant feast. In the middle of the feast, somebody turns to him and says, Well, King, I, I know this isn't a holiday. It's not a religious day. It's not a celebration day. Why are we having the feast? He said, My brother knows he's going to be alive tomorrow. You never know. You know? I've had... Three or four friends passed away this year, and I guarantee not one of them thought they were going to be dead the next day. You know, there was heart attacks, things like that. You just never, ever know. But, you know, what do you want to do? Spend your whole life worrying about that or enjoying life, and if it happens, it happens. Like me, for exercise, I do kettlebell, and it's a very strenuous exercise. And, you know, people go, aren't you afraid you're going to hurt yourself with that? I go, no, I'm afraid I'm really going to hurt myself if I don't exercise. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, to me, it, that's the best health, best health insurance in the world is exercising. You know, because figure, say you get to 70 years old and all of a sudden you're sick, your body's falling apart. How much would you give to somebody to be healthy again? $10,000? $100,000? All your money? You know? You know so I, I wound up spending actually probably $2,000 a year that I don't really need to be spending, but on Tai Chi, weightlifting, kettlebell. And I tell you, I'm in great shape. I could die tomorrow, but I'm in, I mean, die healthy. He's going to be one of those people to go, how do you die? You're so healthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What is kettlebell? What, kettle, what is kettlebell? We're just looking at oh, the man. Thing. Do you want kettlebell? Yeah, well, you would never do it like that. <laughs> it's, uh, strangely enough, I was reading Reader's Digest years ago. And who's the blonde that was on Grey's Anatomy that left? Oh, yeah. Hi. 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 You know, too. So, I never thought the two of them were right anyway, so I'm glad you left, no. <laughs> but, I was reading an article on her, and they said to her, she goes, uh, the guy was saying, you really seem like you stay in pretty good shape. You know, you must work out a lot. She goes, well, I used to. She goes, but now I've discovered this thing called kettlebell, and I work out twice a week for 20 minutes, and that's it. And it is, it, it's basically, like, like you described it, it's a cannonball with a handle on it. Right? And you swing it in different ways, different patterns, and you can start from some of the exercises in the school I go to, to uh, especially women, but guys too that haven't done a lot with weights, they start with no weights at all. They just go through the motions of doing it, getting up off the floor doing something. Or Are you showing them a picture of it? Yeah. yeah. So like with a kettlebell, like a swing is the best thing you can do. Like a swing like this and you just tighten up everything and you just, whew, and you're shooting it out there. Uh, you do ones over the head, you do all these things, but it's best to have an instructor do it. And talk about somebody, something that burns weight off you. I mean, it's like 800 and something calories for about a 35 to 40 minute session. But I tell you what, the next day, you know you have been through a 35, 40 minute session. You know, it's the same weight and you change weight. It depends on the exercise. Like with, with the swing, when I do the swing, I use a much heavier weight. I use, for me, I use about a 60 pound, 50 pound weight. But if, if I tried to do overhead presses with that, I wouldn't even do one. So the presses, maybe I use a 16 to 20 pound weight because you've got to do it a bunch of times. Well, crunches... Is better than doing the bench pressing? It is. It, it's, it sounds like it's more fun. It, it's, well, it depends on what your definition of fun is. It's a lot of work. Uh, a lot of women do it. In my classes, it's usually two or three guys and the rest of women. But you talk about people's bodies changing within a six month period. The women that I've, I've seen come in there, like after they've had kids, or they just decided they want to lose weight or whatever, it's just, like me, I'm, I do have extra weight here, but I am like incredibly solid compared right. to what I was like five, six years ago. So I wouldn't change it uh, for anything. And it cures a lot of things, shoulder aches, back aches, stuff like that. Uh, the bell swinging out there uh, really helps. So look it up online, you, you'll see. Yeah. But you want to go to an RKC certified instructor. Because some gyms have kettlebells, 
And they go, oh yeah, you're smart like this and like that, and people aren't worried about your posture or anything like that. It's, I think it's RKC, yeah, RKC certified instructor. And usually it's a gym that that's all they do, is kettlebell. But like I say, you know, if, if you ever decide to do it, the first day, do not try to keep up with everybody else. It was a much lighter weight, because I know, <laughs> first day I went in there being a guy, here's all these little women in there and stuff, and, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. and I kept up with them the whole weight, you know, using a much heavier weight and stuff. Next day, oh my God, because <laughs> your glutes just kill you. I couldn't even sit, I could go to sit down and be like, <laughs> <laughs> so I learned my lesson. Even now, I was sick last week, and the week before I had a cold, so I've been off for two weeks. When I go back next week, I will start very slow right. and work my way back. But uh, that'd be interesting. If any of you decide to do it, email me. Let, let me know how it worked out for you. So, but I'm, I'm still a big proponent of Tai Chi. As we're getting, you know, that's softer, gentler. You know, people aren't kicking you and punching you in the face, but you're learning how to bend and move. Right. Keep them straight. So what were some of the things that caused you all stress? So deadlines. Deadlines. And that's part of the job, though, isn't it? Yeah. That's pretty much the job it description. Me out. And so, what could she do to, to reduce stress about deadlines? Quit. Quit? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> do you have a passion you'd rather do than court reporting? Oh, horses are my passion. Horses. You know what was funny? When, there's no money in horses. When I was asking you that, horses was going through my mind. But now you say there's no money in horses. My friend John down in Texas, his sister in law and brother in law, Loved horses, but raising them, no money. Well, what they really started loving was equestrian. And they went around to a bunch of different races and said, we could do better than this. And they started designing their own courses. And now they have, all around the country, they do equestrian events. And they're making great money. And they're around what they love, which is horses. So there's always some way. A lot of times, we don't think out of the box. We think. This is what I want to do. This is the only way you can do this. It, it's like the online courses. I mean, my business model for court reporters for years and years has been doing online, uh, doing live seminars. And that's how I made money. And last year, thinking outside that box changed everything. When I uh, decided to do the online, I'm like, wow, dude, this is the future. This is something that if I build this up, have 50 hours worth of stuff online, I can pass this down to my kids. Because, I mean, court reporting is court reporting. It's not changing over the years, you know? Because 20 years from now, you'd be watching a dead guy on TV going, that's the guy who used to do kettlebell. Oh, man. <laughs> I remember those guys. But, hey, I'm getting high hours. All right, what's something else causes somebody's stress? I put down finances. Finances? Because you only have to worry about money these and, days. And what kind of stress do you have about finances? Well, Just worrying about money? That, you know, because when you're freelance, Right. You know, it's not like a regular weekly, monthly salary. Exactly. You know, so that gives you a little stress sometimes because some weeks will be slow. Right. And get a little busier than it might get slow. So it's kind of up and down. So that's a little I'm self employed. Right. I'm right there with you. We had this talk with Carrie because in the speaking business, what happens is when things drop down, people don't want to pay you as much. So imagine you go to a job or somebody calls you up, got a job for you, uh, uh, Tuesday, great. And you had to say, what does it pay? Or they say, we've got a job for you, uh, it's a dollar a page. Go, you're crazy. Do you know what I make a page? I'm a court report. Well, this is what we have, a dollar a page, do you want it or not? Okay, you don't want, do you want it for a dollar, do you want it for a dollar, dollar page? Okay, she's got the job for a dollar a bit, you know. It's just, we just become a commodity to them. And Carrie was just amazed, you know. I, I've taken jobs for one-tenth of what I made in 2007 and yeah. 2012. Now it's starting to come back up again. Right. But I started taking anything. And like I said, I'd make a lot of money as a, a keynote speaker, and suddenly I was going out for like $500, $750. It went from, what do you charge, to, what do you got? <laughs> what you got? Okay, I'll be over. Just a luncheon? I'll be over for that. So... Uh, with finances, you have financial stress. What are you doing to put money away? Uh, what are you doing to save money? Uh, ClarkHoward.com, C-L-A-R-K-H-O-W-A-R-D.com. If you want to save money on your credit cards, your phone bills, your cell phone, your kid's college, 
your house payment, loans, whatever, <coughs> you go on there, he doesn't take any money from any sponsors or any advertisers. Everything that he does is for the consumer and for us. And you can find uh, the best deals on airline trips, for vacations. I, I remember one time my wife calls me up and goes, we're going to France. Well, when did, when did you decide that? I was just listening to Clock Hour. Howard, there's a special to midnight tonight on American Airlines, $250 a piece, kids are 183. I'm right there with you, baby. <laughs> and you know what? I lost quite a few thousand dollars worth of work that week that we were over there, but you just had to let it go. Yeah. It's, that's an unbearable. That yeah. It's unbearable. I mean, if, if we get a great job uh, or we decide on vacation, people are going to call us for work that time. And in September, I have two days in September every year, at least three or four clients want me for those two days, and I can only take one on each day. So I might not have any work for the rest of the month or the month before, everybody wants it on those two days. Right. Every year. So putting stuff away, you know, smart, and, and investing now, boy, I tell you, just find yourself somebody good, mutual funds, something nice and safe, because I tell you what, if I was going to invest, I wouldn't invest any money at all this summer. I would wait until the fall. Because it, it, I really think the stock market's going to take a big crash this summer. And then, you know, the old adage in selling stocks is sell in May and walk away. And then at the end of the summer, buy stuff again. But I would just, I would wait, all right? And find somebody who knows what they're doing. It's like, I'm so proud of myself today. They had the slot machine in the, re in the restaurant, and I put in $5, and, it, and I won 20 and I cashed out. Mm -hmm. The old me would have said, I'm high. <laughs> yeah, I'm and I wouldn't have my five dollars right now, but I'm going to the movies tonight on the restaurant. So I don't promote gambling, but uh, <laughs> well, you know what I found with gambling too? I went in there with five dollars. If I lost five dollars, that would have been it. But winning 20, that's a lot of money. Quadrupling my money. If I put a 20 in there, winning 20 would have been like, oh, I just doubled my money. I can do better than that. And wind up losing it all. So. Do you use that site for like airline tickets? Everything. Do you use it really? Everything. I mean, clocktower.com, just go there. Every scam that's out there now, whether it's a phone scam, internet scam, mail scam is on there. Okay. And you know, you know it's those scam things. Basically, if somebody tells you, calls you up, and it seems too good, it is. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, as soon as people say, you have one click. I actually had one weird thing years ago when my wife sent in a picture of us on vacation to, um, I think it was the Hampton Inn, I was having a photo contest. My mother's like, oh, you ought to send in the picture with the girls and the monkeys. That's like a really great picture. It was a family photo contest. She wins the thing. <laughs> and this guy calls me up and he says, well, I just want you to know that you know, your wife has won. I go, yeah, Greg, when do you ask me for the, my credit card number? He goes, no, you, you won. Yeah, 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 yeah. what she won. And then finally he said, help to the... Uh, Hampton Inn, I'm like, really? It was great. She won like th four round trip airline tickets for us to any place we wanted to go, tickets to any amusement park we wanted to go to, a nice, like, four or $500 camera, uh, 10 uh, Hampton Inn uh, free stays, rental car, and probably like $500 cash. <laughs> like, home. all right. <laughs> so we went on vacation that year. You never know. All right, something else that causes you stress. Your daughter, well, as soon as you figure out how to get rid of that stress, call me, because that's what kids do, isn't it? It was interesting, I was listening to a guy, John Roseman, that has a, a column in the Atlanta paper about kids, and there was one thing that he said that just helped me so much with my kid, because they would act in a certain way, and I went, oh my God, the life's going to be ruined, they're going to be like this, she's horrible with money, what's going to happen when she's 40, you know, oh, look at this, you know, her choices and people and friends, oh, that's horrible. He said, you got to realize that when kids are 18, 17, 16, up until about they're 21, their brains aren't finished yet. They're still developing. My daughter's 24 too, and to tell you the difference between my, my oldest daughter is 25, to tell you the difference between my two kids is my youngest daughter has every penny she's ever made, and my oldest daughter doesn't have the last penny she ever made. <laughs> Matter of fact, a great example of that, I, I found a purse in the house. And I looked at Gianna, the younger one, I said, you know whose wallet this is? She goes, well, Dad, look in the money department. 
said, if, it's, if it's, there's receipts in there, it's Jenica's. If there's cash in there, it's mine. <laughs> and I just laugh because I'm going, that is so true. And I mean, the internet was the worst thing that ever happened to her as a shopper. Right, right. But the problem, our stress comes from we think that's who they're going to be. The three boys in our family, actually all five kids in our family, we didn't, didn't decide what we really wanted to do in life until we were in our 30s. And you know what? She may never figure it out. She may wind up being the same person she is now for the rest of their life. The thing is, you have to love them for who they are. And I still agree, believe that the only reason my brothers and I are alive today, my mother's unwavering, undying love. You know, one of us was a heroin addict, the other one was, you know, a hippie, one of us was a greaser, <laughs> doing stupid, dumb stuff. And I think her prayers wound up saving us through high school, college, semi-beginning adulthood, but she never changed. She never stopped caring about us. And it was that love that was always there that at the end brought all of us back together. And, uh, and uh, even my brother Jim, I mean, it's funny, he was always different from us. We were all, everybody else in the family was really kind of close and very family oriented, and Jim was just very much himself. He'd call him up and phone, hey Jim, how's it going? Good. So, what's up? Anything? No. So, you know, it's our dad's birthday coming up, but, yeah. And you'd finally get him to talk about himself, but then he was a screenwriter, then he would go off and start talking about it. And then finally one day I just said, you know, it used to get me upset that he wasn't like me. <laughs> yeah. Why can't he be more like me, right? And then I said, what right do I have to do that? He's who he is. I mean, whatever it is, that's who he is. And I swear, from that day, he changed. Once I let go of the whole thing, all of a sudden he became this loving, touchy-feely guy. You get like videos of him from little kittens and stuff playing and everything. <laughs> hey, aren't these cute? Little, little, little. And like, when you, all my other bro brothers and sisters would be going, what's happened to Jim? Is it just like the pod people come? Have they replaced him? But it did, he just changed, I mean, like within a 30-day period. I just wonder if, because I finally let it go, he was okay with it. So, I mean, I'm not even going to ask you what the problems you have with your daughter is, because you know what? It's all in perspective. The things about my oldest daughter that drove us crazy and everything. We tell our friends and they look at us and go, are you an idiot? I wish I had those problems with my kid. You know? So, it's all perspective. Anybody else? Stress? A stressor? Running late for things. I'm always leaving the house at the last minute. What should she do? That's it. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> Let me write that down, Jeff. Leave on time, leave earlier. I'm just trying to keep the thing going here. So. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, in Atlanta, you have to leave earlier because one accident on the major freeway and you're not going anywhere. Right. Yes. Same here, right? Chicago, same thing? That's just it. And there's things that I get to two hours earlier because there's no choice. Are you kidding? Atlanta Airport is 17 minutes from my house. And it can take me 17 minutes to get there, it can take me two hours. I had a buddy of mine that lives up in Alpharetta, which is north of Atlanta. There's one road, 400 highway that comes down to downtown. And I mean, it's like eight, nine, or oh, eight or 10 lanes. And he says, if I leave my house at 6 a.m., I'll get to work at 7. If I leave at 6.15, I'll get there at 8.30. Right. That's just incredible. You had your hand up? I was going to say, I, I'm, after going through this list, I know it's my fault, but uh, I let people in, interfere with my planned time, and so then I get stressed because now I've got to really, and it doesn't matter whether it's work, whether it's things I have to do at home, whether I, you know. But and what was the great quote that we had earlier? What part of? No, no, I understand. But one of the I, one of the women I work for that has decided I'm a good listener, and she'll call at like ten o'clock and talk oh. two or three about her problems. And you can't really. And then sometimes she's so stressed. What's her name? Feel, <laughs> so that I don't want to say. It, okay, let's say her name's Ella. Okay, Ellen. Hey, Ellen, how you doing? Oh, yeah, good talk. Oh, you break it up, Ellen. I need to break it up. I must be the bad cell line. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, that's great. 
Ellen, yeah, okay, hey, great to fit. Oh, wait a second, somebody's at the uh, Hold on, I'm coming, okay? <laughs> you wake up there, you woke up the baby, get out of here, you jerk! <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, stuff like this. Uh, what we used to teach in our home uh, office thing is because that's it. That's the disruptions you always get. I have two people that call me, and I'm, look at Diane. It's uh, and again, I won't mention their name in case they've decided to become a court reporter and see them because they'll know who they are. But when I see her name on there, I, if I pick it up, I pick it up. Hey, how's it going? I was just running out the door. What, what, what do you need? And that's it. You've already established you were running out the door. And she always calls you? it night when she knows it. Um, you either go to bed or you know, you're through your home. Well, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not feeling good right now. Uh, you know, I, I think I really need, need to get fed. I don't know what I got, but um, is it something you need right away? You know, pick up, if you know it's them, you got to call our ID now, you know, for most people. So you can tell who it is. And sometimes when I call people, my, my wife would tell me, like, my daughter's violin teacher. If we have to call her, she goes, would you call Carol? Why? Because if I call her, I'll be on for a half hour. Mm -hmm. oh, no, so I've got to call her up because she knows I call up. Hey, Carol, how's it going? What time is she on this lesson? Great, we'll have her there. Bye. <laughs> I'm very direct. If I've got to call up somebody, uh, my Tai Chi teacher, he is known for keeping you on the phone, like you say, for hours. And either one or two things is sometimes when I don't mind that. I know he needs to talk to somebody and then it's okay. I'll pay my dues and listen to him for whatever he needs. Uh, there's sometimes I'll call him up and say, I'm getting ready to walk into this building or I'm on my way to pick up my daughter. I'm getting ready to do something. I need to tell you this. And there's sometimes where I just go, Herb, I gotta get off. I know you got a lot more to tell me. I gotta go to bed. I'm sorry. I've got a thing in the morning. I can't stay up anymore. You know what? Diane's calling me. You know, there's some things that I have with Diane where I can put the phone. Oh, somebody's calling up. One of, oh, it's Diane. She needs me for something. I gotta go. Bye. They're calling me for dinner. Bye. Gotta go. You know, you have to do it. You know what drives my wife, wife crazy? My oldest daughter will come over to help her, and she'll wind up wasting more time doing stuff. So not only is she not doing anything, my wife's not doing anything. So she's got to explain stuff to her. And it's not like she's being lazy. She's got to stop what she's doing, explain to her what she needs to be doing. Now, if she's at the computer because she's doing her social networking and media stuff for her, and she's not packing her boxes, and every time she comes up, she goes, you know what? I love having her over here, but I'm not getting anything done. So she's got to figure out some way to make that work for her. And I said, you're the boss. You've got to tell them what to do. Anybody else? Well, what are some suggestions you might have for somebody like that? Don't answer the phone. Don't answer the phone. There they go. Well, but she never know if it's work-related or just... She's in a relationship, relationship. So, sometimes Ooh. she just needs to vent, but you keep hearing the same thing over and over and over and over, and it's like either do something or shut up. Yeah. Exactly. That's pretty much it. Text, right? <coughs> you know what's funny? I have a better relationship with my older daughter through texting than I do talking. We talk, we'll get into an argument over something. You know, it's usually me saying something stupid, <laughs> I admit. But texting, all of a sudden, her sense of humor comes out, and we have fun times texting, sending pictures to each, each other, so that is our little communication buffer. Texting works better than in person. Who else has something that causes them stress? Nobody? That's it? You all wrote down three things, and I've answered all your questions? It's a gift I have, folks. It's amazing. Anybody else? One more. We'll finish up this part. Well, one. worrying about the technology. When she said about the future, and it's the always hanging over a head being replaced by voice recording or things like that. So it's like no matter how hard you're working or how good of a job you're doing, that's always hanging over. So there's the stress of being replaced by voice recorders. Is that actually one of my favorite Bob Newhart things? Remember when he was the therapist, Bob Newhart show? And remember the cast of characters they had on there? One of them was an old lady that worked at the grocery store. She was a cashier at the grocery store. And during one of the round table sessions that they had there, they said, okay, and what about you, Alice? Well, uh, I love my job. 
I work at a cashier. I work with great people there. Um, they pay me very well. They let me get off and do vacations whenever I want. And I've been there for 27 years. And one of the guys said, what's the problem? She goes, I'm afraid it won't last. <laughs> so instead of enjoying the time that she's there, she's worried about it not lasting. There's nothing you can do about that. You can't blow up technology. You can change jobs. I personally really can't see you all ever being replaced by voice recorders. First of all, they can't ask questions. Second of all, they really stink at putting in punctuation. <laughs> there is no punctuation form. And you know how punctuation totally changes what the person's saying. Right? And they're not searchable mostly. Yes? And third of all, foreign doctors. The what? Foreign doctors. Foreign doctors. Foreign doctors. Foreign doctors. They will never be speech recognized. Never. And two or three uh, lawyers ta talking <coughs> over each other. What was the example that uh, was it Anita that had today, or when you had about the person yelling every time they asked a question? Right, Bonnie. Yeah, yeah she was yelling every time she asked, asked a question. I mean, you can't do that with a recorder. Yeah, for foreign doctors, especially Indian doctors, I have a lot of Indian friends, and they just have a different cadence of talking than we do, don't they? They put breaks in different places. Like, <coughs> like my friend Nagesh, if I were to say my phone number, I'd say 404-262-7406. And if he says it's like, photo, oh four two six two, photo seven seven, and your brain just it starts to explode because it's, you know the words aren't broken in the right place. I just don't see how that's. I mean, they will try to make it happen, but I, I think so far it's been failing, hasn't it? Yeah, but they what happens is they lay everybody off, and then after it fails, then they start hiring them back. But it's that in between time while they're. <coughs> finding out that it, the newest and latest technology isn't going to do it. Yeah, wait, wait till murder trials and all that start getting overturned. But like I say, it, it's not going to happen all across the country. They're trying it, what, in California now? And then they tried in Pennsylvania? And eventually, hopefully, it will fail in those states before it comes over here. Yes? I had a couple of thoughts about that, but I use OnStar to get where I'm going. I'd be totally lost. And for a while, they were going to you could get driving directions by telling it where you wanted to go. Well, it's obviously not working because it's gone. <laughs> you get a person now. Oh, on star? You could say, like, I'm going to 360 Main Street. And it said, I, I didn't get that. Just Let's oh, just oh, start oh, with the yes. numbers. Okay, sure. So, you know, it's, if you can personally train it to your voice, then it's pretty good. Like, if you have it dragging whatever on your computer, yeah. then it's pretty good. But if you are going to try to speech recognize the whole room of people. Oh, forget that. It's definitely not there. Now, do you use anything like Google Maps or anything like that on a smartphone? Oh, um, but Google Maps said to go south on 53 today. Yeah, really That's scary, isn't it? I like being able to have a human. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever used Siri? Yeah. Oh, I hate it. Really Siri is actually one of my wife's best friends. Oh. She didn't even know she was Siri. Back in the early 2000s, she's a voiceover talent. And she got paid to, uh, it, basically they have to say every word pretty much in the English language over and over again with different inflections. And she did a month, it was 30 days, working eight hour days recording this, and she got paid for it. I got paid whatever the day rate was for it. Well then, eight years later, uh, Steve Jobs, decides to do Siri and picks her voice as the voice of Siri. Your wife is Siri? No, no, no. My wife's really good friend, Susan Bennett. Oh. Hmm. So she calls up my wife one day and says, Diane, you're not going to believe this, but somebody just let me use their, their, their iPhone. I think I'm the voice of Siri. She goes, I did that like back in the 70s. So she contacted Apple trying to get paid for it. They wouldn't give her anything. Wouldn't even give her the time of day. So she was distraught trying to figure out how to... Uh, what to do with it. My wife and I are both marketers. My wife is an extreme self-promoter and marketer. And she convinced her to start calling things like the Ellen Show, to get an agent. Next thing we know, she's got an agent, she's got a manager, she's been on the David Letterman Show, she's been on uh, Ellen DeGeneres, all these different shows. She's working all the... Matter of fact, I just turned down a big convention for next week because uh, it's a big digital convention. They're going, oh, we're going to have Roz over there, the one that... The, one of the co-founders of Apple, and we're going to have Kevin, um, what's his name, one of, 
the actor there, and, and people are paying twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars for. And we're going to have Susan Bennett. I said, the voice of Siri. They said, wow, how did you know that? I said, which well, is a friend of ours. And they go, we want you to come and MC uh, the sessions for, for two days. So I gave them my price and like the phone, I'm like, this is dead. I'm like, hello? Oh, um, that's kind of out of our range. I said, well, how much were you thinking of paying? I don't know, like an hourly wage? Then it went dead silent on my end. <laughs> and I said, you got to be kidding. She said, well, you know, I don't know, maybe like $50 an hour for like two days. And I said, you know what, I, I, I might, I'll give you the name of an, a, a group I know that might be able to get some amateur speakers that are trying to get better. I said, but if I were you, I'd just keep the money and do it yourself. And she was appalled that I wouldn't take $500 for a day and a half work. And I said, I don't even want to even tell you what I make an hour. But, you know, I turned down 500 for an hour. So, you know. <laughs> It was just amazing, but that's what the economy is. But she's one of the speakers on it. She'll do like, she did a top 10 list on uh, Letterman, so it's pretty cool. All right. So, in the book here, let's see if we have anything else. What's a groucho? A groucho is, yeah, let's actually do, do that part here. A groucho is, uh, I, I tell this story about when I was in traffic. I, I asked people how many people have a pair of groucho glasses. You know, some people raise their hand. I said, I always keep a, a pair in the car for traffic. I am sitting in the line of traffic and, you know, went down to sit there bored as heck and, you know, put on my glasses and kind of beat the horn and the person next to me looks up and it's wave and hey, look back like I'm all cool and everything. And all of a sudden I hear that and beep. I'm going, oh no. <laughs> I look over, they've got a clown nose on. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. So as we go down this, um, again, you got to make a decision to do. If you're stuck in traffic, find some humor in it. All right, how about gas prices? Can you do anything about gas prices? Hello? There's nothing you can do that's going to make gas prices go down. I don't care what it is. You can decide, I'm not going to buy gas anymore. Well, good. Gas will still be that price. You just won't have any gas. <laughs> you won't be going anywhere. You could use your sense of humor to deal with it. And the way I deal, deal with it, I, I talk about gas prices in Atlanta now. Almost $4 a gallon for regular in some places. I was at the gas station last week. This guy in front of me goes up to the cashier and says, let me have a dollar on pump set. I said, a dollar on pump set? Where are you going? Pump eight? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to make it, pal. <laughs> but again, it makes me laugh. Doesn't make the prices change, but I'm able to deal with it now. I find a sense of humor in it. So things about being stuck in traffic, right? So write a funny poem about uh, improv something, about you know traffic. Uh, you know, put a tennis ball in there and you know, do inner thigh exercises. I, I do what I call car, I call it car aerobics, but it doesn't make any sense because it's isometrics. But I will, if I'm stopped, not where I'm going, I'll grab the wheel and press in for like 10 seconds like that, okay, then relax. Then a while later, I'll grab the top here and bend over and do like crunches, pushing down on it, then do them going up and same thing on the bottom and pulling up because I'm stuck in traffic, okay? So I, and sometimes I'll do just pushing against the wheel. I'm still going to be stuck in traffic. And then probably looking through the window, that guy is stressed. Who cares? He's stressed out. Look at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, imagine the life story of the person stuck in the car next to you. Oh, I love doing that. We used to always do that with the kids and stuff. So tell me about that person. Oh, they're great. <laughs> they start making up stories about people. Right? Uh, Diane would do that. She'd like go through a neighborhood and she'd see a cop car in front of somebody's house. You know, I think Sally's in there. And she doesn't know the person's name. I think she's having an affair with that police officer. And he's coming over and <laughs> she doesn't pick it up. Sing along with the radio. I'm the worst singer in the world. All the women in my family, since I'm the only guy, uh, wonderful singers. My wife used to tour with Tammy Wynette. She was a backup singer for her, had her own album. And everything. They're wonderful singers. Me, I sing the radio change stations by itself. <laughs> I mean, I actually asked my wife one time, I said, do I want to sing that bad? She goes, well, imagine me walking around the house all day telling really bad jokes. Oh my God, that bad? I, I just can't do it. But in the car, I can. And I make up my own lyrics and stuff all the time. Right? Make them funny for you. Listen to your favorite comedian on tape. How many people have a uh, serious radio? Right? They have comedy channels. You're stuck in traffic, why not listen to comedy, right? Get, get yourself laughing. Blast a talk radio and pretend to headbang to it. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> like, you know, wash the ball in there. <laughs> Crack the windows down, and people just go, what is wrong with that? Um, you know, do fun stuff. I always talk about going up to the, uh, you know, you go through, through the fast food restaurant. They always got that crummy microphone system through the drive through Right now, next time you go through and they go, you know, can I take your order, please? You just go, oh, yes, I like taking a hot pie. <laughs> and the cherry pie. <laughs> See, now you laugh, but I did that last week. One came on and said, that'd be four ninety five. Drive around the car. <laughs> How do they know? <laughs> but again, it makes me laugh. And, you know, sometimes it's just internal humor. But, I mean, how many times have you heard a witness and you're going, you lions? <laughs> you can't say that out loud, right? Oh, yeah, and I bet. You know. uh, do facial expressions to uh, crow's feet? My mom used to always do this one all the time. Died 78, no double chins, nothing. You know, didn't have an ounce of fact every day. Walk around the house, hey, mom. Practice ways to ask your boss for a raise. <laughs> hey boss, how about a raise? Go on and help me have better days. Hey. Again, you're doing it by yourself. The boss is not there. You're having fun. You're doing stupid stuff, right? So you're laughing, going, I would never do that. <laughs> Even if you're in a room closed up by yourself, who knows? My dead relatives would see me doing that and be shamed in heaven. Great line by Benjamin Franklin was if people realized how little other people thought about them, they would be amazed. Yep. Oh, what will people think? They don't care. They're thinking about their problems, or they're thinking about what do you think about them, OK? Um, practice, uh, let's see, give the person in the car next to a crowd show, which we'll talk about, make faces. I used to do that. I, I did magic tricks. And you get a car with a bunch of rug rats in the back, turn around everything. And I do magic tricks. I take it. It looked like I took a cigarette and shoved up my nose and come out my mouth. And, like, ah. and you see, turn around the mouth. Ah, bah, 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 you know? And I'd be like, <laughs> uh, let's see. Clean out your glove compartment, right? Teach yourself the juice harp. I actually did that in the car in traffic over a two-year period. You know what the juice harp is? That little thing. It's like that little harp, you put it between your teeth, and you twang it, and you change the structure of your mouth to make different notes out of it. And it's funny, I was doing it one day, <laughs> this guy walks by, he goes, he's looking at me, he starts laughing, and I'm going, he goes, oh, no, no, I'm not laughing at you. He goes, I'm realizing now how funny I look when I practice the harmonica in the car. <laughs> That's the same thing. All right, and listen to books on tape. Do you all do that? Do you know your library has audiobooks for free? Anybody ever get that overload.com? They have all these books on audio for free. You go up there, you open up an account, you connect it to your local library. And right now, I love the Jack Reacher series. I've been listening to those one after another on that, all for free. And I was paying Audubon, audible.com $14.95 a month for one audiobook. That was it. And now, I, mean, I constantly listen to those. So those are just great in traffic, great way to make site? those miles go by. Is it yes? Audio, uh, site, the name of the site is? Uh, is it Overdrive? Overdrive. That's it. What did I say? <laughs> Overlook? <laughs> Overlook? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Overdrive.com. So you go there, you set up an account, you hook it to, you have to have a library card. So you hook it to your library card at your local library, and you can search on there. And like, let's say there's a, an author you really like. I, I like that for some reason. Don't tell anybody else, especially guys. But um, you know Ivanovich? Oh, yeah. I love her books. I would have bought her books when I was younger, but I couldn't walk her through the airport with a pink book. <laughs> but I think she has a great sense of humor. I love Lulu and all that. Grandma. Oh, Grandma's Grandma. hysterical, right? You know, packing the gun all the time and everything. And I'll listen to it. My wife goes, all right, it's entertaining, but it's not what I want to listen to. But every once in a while, I just want something that's just fun to listen to. I love listening uh, to those. But if the book's not available, you put your name down, you're on the waiting list. Uh, when it comes up, they send you an email saying, hey, that book you wanted is ready. Yeah, they only have like so many copies of everything. Yeah. So you got into the library to get the audio disc? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. You download it onto your cell phone. Oh. Yeah, if you have a smartphone. Okay. Okay. So, any questions before we pack up? 
Now, if your friends are interested, this is the same program that we'll be doing in the fall. And then next year when we come back again, you don't need to come back if you already have your credits, right? And if you guys are not procrastinators. And uh, Anita will actually be doing two different programs uh, probably next year. Maybe, maybe this time, I'm not sure. But then every two years we change the program. Usually. So two years from now, this will be a completely different 10 hour program. So 2015 will be the same program? Yes. For the most part. Probably Carrie and I will be the same. It's just too hard for her to come up with another three hour program. So, did you all like all the speakers? Yeah. Oh, was it good? Okay. And what I ask you, you should we do evaluation sheets? I didn't do them this time. If you would write us a quick email, if you still feel inspired, say you know what you thought, what you liked about the, the program, we appreciate it. We'd love to put those on the website. And by the looks on your faces, you're ready to go home. Do you promise to grab more dessert and candy on the way out if I let you go home on time? <laughs> Nobody needed remedial court reporting today, so we made it perfect on time. So if you had a good time, give me a nice round of applause. Well, there you go. You're done. How easy was that? I huh? hope you had a great time taking this program. Now you have a few more CEUs to add to your CEU bucket there. Now remember, if you're taking one of our longer courses, please wait until you finish all the seminars before you send us your answers. And please try to, if you're going to put them in an email, copy them in one straight vertical line uh, separated by the different uh, course titles. And that makes it easy for me to, to grade, makes it go a lot faster, and I don't make any mistakes. Well, not so much. Okay. And also, you can scan them in, in order and send them to me as well. Remember, we are always putting new content up here. Every year we will have at least four to ten more hours worth of uh, CEUs that you can get here from the comfort of your home. So if you know more court reporters that would like to get their credits that way, please let them know about it. And remember, your home for CEUs online, Jeff Jess's Seminars, where you can get your CEUs online anytime. <laughs>